Hi. This is a very special tank for me and in three episodes we will cover everything there is to know about this little tank yet. I will talk about the history, how it's on the inside and I will take you for a ride, show how it works. Something about the history of this tank, but we need to start from the beginning in 1922 when Sweden started with trials with tanks. And despite what they did during the 1920s and the Landsverk factory in Sweden that developed a range of very good and state-of-the-art tanks during the 1930s, the Swedish generals, what, they were not that convinced that tanks actually was something they needed. They were a bit old-fashioned and didn't trust this new technology. But during the 1930s, the mid-1930s, things started to change. So in 1936, there was a small amount of money put into the project and saved for, we need to buy some tanks and they should be delivered before 1940. So there were four years to go to have a delivery of some kind of tanks. They wanted something uh, small and they looked different uh, variant what could be possible, available at the time. They asked a few different companies and they realized uh, that the Swedish delivery of what they wanted might take some time. So probably they would not have them delivered in time, so they looked out of Sweden and the solution was found in Prague, in Czechoslovakia. And the result was this. In Prague, the factory Chesmorovska, Kolben Darnek, CKD, a factory had developed this little tankette. And that was something that the Swedish delegation that went to Prague, hmm, that's interesting. We want that. They had some negotiations and in 1937 a contract was written and it should result in delivery of 48 light tanks. And CKD factory in Prague decided to move the assembly line from Prague to Sweden instead of bringing the whole tanks. Putting them together in Sweden would be much easier. So. They already had a cooperation with Jungner factory in Oskarshamn. So that was the place where the assembly line was put up. They had um, one um, team leader for um, the job and uh, 20 factory workers from Prague that came to Sweden. And together with Swedish workers that were hired, they put an assembly line together and during 1937, 1938, they put these tanks together with parts from Sweden and from Prague. So the engine came from Volvo, armor plates from Havestad Järnverk, and bits and pieces came from Prague on railway. But due to a few delays, the delivery of the tanks was not as scheduled. So the final delivery of the tanks didn't finish until early 1939. This is a tankette, not a tank, but in Sweden it was named tank. So the name was Stitsan Model 37 for the contract uh, year. A two-man tank with a driver on this side and the gunner commander in the turret. Engine, a six cylinder Volvo petrol engine, 85 horsepower at the rear, combined with uh, a Praga Wilson pre-selected gearbox, five speed in the middle and the steering at the front. Top speed is uh, 
60 kilometers an hour. And I have driven several of these tanks and I know I would never try 60 kilometers an hour in this tank because it's very short, the steering is very direct and it's light. I've been driving maybe 30, 40 kilometers an hour and that's enough. It's uh, a terrible ride to be up to 60 in this little creature, uh, but it's a wonderful vehicle. When these tanks first arrived to the army in 1938, they were delivered to uh, Göta Livgade in Stockholm, which was the regiment where they have started with tanks. And in 1936, the government in Sweden decided that a few garrisons should be closed down. They should reduce the army. And the decision was made in 1936 that uh, Göta Livgade should be closed down. And in September 1939, the garrison was closed. And what happened in September 1939? Well, Second World War broke out, but the decision was made. We shall reduce the army and the decision is made, fulfill it. So the tanks, they were transferred to, to other garrisons instead, to I-9, which is um, the infantry regiment in Skövde, and I-10, which was the infantry regiment in Stegnes. So they formed two tank battalions with these tanks, and they also had 16 Model 38, which is the first Landsverk produced L60 tank that we had in Sweden. So that was the start of building up the tank force in Sweden during the Second World War. And during the war, these tanks were replaced by little big ones, not much, but uh, with 37 millimeter guns. And as soon as they had tanks enough for the new tank battalions, these tanks, they were transferred to the island Gotland, where they served for many years. So they actually was in service until about 1957, when they were taken out of service. This tank is one of nine that we had still survived in Sweden, kept in the museum for a long time. There are three vehicles in Sweden in different locations that are still in running order. And in 2004, we actually, by a sudden, found two wrecks in a shooting range in Sweden. That we managed to, to salvage them and to bring them to Strängnäs. So now we had 11 tanks of this unique little vehicle. And one of these wrecks, they are at the moment in the play area of the museum where it's a play tank for the kids. So we actually used the, what was left of the wreck. And one of the nine tanks was delivered to the museum in Prague in 2006, where it has been restored and now part of the Czech Republic history and Czechoslovakia industry. There is a lot more to tell about this wonderful little vehicle. And I have a lot of stories that I will tell you in a following episode. We will also look on the inside on all the details how it's put together, and of course, we will give you a ride in a tank like this. So stay tuned.